Uh, so my name is Jesse Middleton. I was one of the early team members at WeWork. Uh, when I say early, about five of us when we got started. Uh, I came along, I had a tech startup in, uh, in New York City, met the founders of WeWork, and we created this concept they call WeWork Labs, which I'll get into in a little bit. But WeWork Labs was, was our focus on kind of startup tech companies. And we started in New York City, not how, here in San Francisco, although by a show of hands, how many of you know of WeWork or know what it is or have some idea or just want to take a guess? All right, cool. So a decent amount of people. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, what I have up here are a few things that I am. Um, when I was a kid, I was, uh, I guess, what my parents would say, I was a computer kind of whiz kid. I liked technology, took shit apart, put it back together. Half the time it worked. Um, I went to college for business originally in the management information systems, and I dropped out. So I'm a college dropout. Uh, pretty proud of that. Um, I am a husband. My wife also works in tech uh, at a company called Pivotal, which some of you may know of. She was there early on in New York. I'm a nerd. I was an engineer. I started in network engineering, network security, continued on that path, and eventually got into the business side. An entrepreneur. I am most recently a father. Uh, this is my son, Holden. I love him a lot. He's great. He's asleep right now, I hope. Um, Clicker is not working, so I'm just going to go next year, I think. Hey. All right, there you go. Uh, so that's, that's how I love him. Um, and I most recently am a uh, VC, which I'll talk a little bit about, based in New York City. And I am at sarcasm on Twitter, which I am super proud to say was recently verified. It's really exciting. Really great day in my life. I'm just kidding, guys. It's, it's, it was a joke. I'm sorry. Um, so let's talk a little bit. Uh, I went to Drexel University. I mentioned I dropped out of college, but this is where I went to college. Uh, it's in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. And I was really into technology. And this is what most people thought, like, I'm not exactly sure where this photo is from, but this is like what people think, you know, 10 years ago, if you work with tech, you work in these rooms, they got like cool blue servers for some reason, blue is the color that people use. But this is actually what my life was. Um, dealt with this all over uh, Asia, Mexico, Western Europe. Um, these are my friends, I swear. Um, my friends though, uh, in college, I, as I mentioned, I, I was there for management information systems, but I think what I got from there was a real appreciation for having great people around me. And uh, I probably had a shake like that with one or two of my own friends. And that bottom right photo, if any of you know Philadelphia, is a place called Geno's, there's Pats and Geno's. In Philadelphia, cheesesteaks were a thing for uh, the middle of the night when we were really drunk. So when I dropped out of college, I decided to uh, join a company that I had worked with as a co-op. And co-ops are pretty sweet. They were internships where you actually did work. Uh, you didn't go and fetch coffee. And it's really important because it was my first experience um, I had been sort of a child entrepreneur. I'd started like a little web hosting company, but this is my first experience where I realized like I didn't have to take the traditional path. And I think this is what a lot of people are realizing today. There's this old path where for most people, elementary school, middle school, high school, college, maybe a four-year degree, go into the workforce, maybe a couple years later, you go and you get your management degree, uh, you know, kind of at HBS or one of those great schools. And, uh, and, and ultimately, that's the path to kind of your career. And I realized that I didn't have to do that. Um, fuck, I got lucky. Um, my co-op said, do you want to go to school part-time and we'll give you a corporate credit card? You're 19 years old. I didn't know what a corporate credit card was, but they did say they'd renew my passport. And, uh, and, I, and I took off and I went to China, I went to Mexico, uh, I went to Western Europe, and I worked on technology and it was pretty exciting. And throughout that process, uh, I got to see the rest of the world. I grew up in a place that's a town with like 20 houses in it. Um, I didn't really know what the rest of the world was. And through this process, not only did I learn I didn't have to go down the traditional path, but I also learned that there were these opportunities where I could be a global citizen. And so not going down the traditional path is number one. But number two is um, being global is super freaking important. Like, I don't know how many people here have passports, have been outside of the country. Where I grew up, it was like zero. Like my parents still don't have passports. Um, but most of you have probably taken a trip or two. But I, I hadn't, and I realized that there was this world around me, and one of the things I noticed was 
I could get along with people anywhere in the world. Languages were not really a barrier anymore. You know, a lot of people spoke English where I went. If they didn't, we could make hand signals. We kind of get by. Uh, I very much remember my first trip to China where I'm pretty sure I mimicked like a chicken when I like wanted chicken. And, uh, and, and like we all got it and like we actually became friends and I still have friends to this day from there. So being a global citizen is something that this generation, like it's just, it's, you have to do it. There's no other plan. So I was 23 years old and I thought I knew a lot of stuff. I mentioned I'm married, my wife Magda, she's great. Um, I wish she was here with me, but she's home with my son Holden who we talked about already. Um, I really love technology, I love to travel. And I loved working with amazing people. And the third piece beyond knowing that there's a different path and being global is important is that you have a choice in what you work on. And my company, WeWork, something important to know is that we have sort of a mantra. And if you know WeWork, you've probably seen it on our shirts. It's actually a WeWork shirt that says creator. But, uh, but our mantra is, you know, do what you love. And at 23, I thought I was really fucking wise. I was like, I'm gonna do what I love. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna work on tech. I'm gonna do this thing. I'm not gonna go finish school. And so I left and I knew that I wanted to do more. So I went from Philadelphia to New York City. I'm assuming most of you know what this is a photo of. Um, when I went to New York City, I joined a company called Live Person. I was 23 years old and I was brought on as the head of technology for a publicly traded company. This is not a good idea. Um, I actually think I did an okay job, but I really didn't like it. Um, you know, we dealt with things like HIPAA compliance. We had customers like Apple, we had customers like Microsoft and AT&T, Bank of America. We dealt with things like Sarbanes-Oxley. Um, don't do it. Like, seriously, don't, don't deal with it. Um, and what I realized over the year and a half that I was there is that not only did I not have to take the traditional path, but people would trust me they would look at me and they knew I knew about technology and they knew I had some idea of what I was talking about and they could trust me. And so that kind of fourth piece was knowing that if I worked really hard and I worked with great people, I could create really cool things. And all of this is really important because I left there and I started three companies. I was over at Twitter earlier and I mentioned this to an employee over there who's been there for a number of years that my only interaction with Jack Dorsey has not been in person. It has been an article entitled, Jesse Middleton makes Jack Dorsey look lazy. This is not a great headline to have. Um, but I worked on these three projects and, uh, and I thought it was really great. And what I realized through the process is that if I was going to create something bigger, um, I wasn't gonna do it on my own. And I was gonna work with these other great people. And ultimately I had met the founders of WeWork and we came together and we said, you know what, we want to work on this thing which is gonna help early stage tech companies, which I'm assuming many of you can relate to being at this event. And we created something called WeWork Labs. And WeWork Labs is, it was and still is our take on an incubator. So WeWork has 70,000 members around the world. And about somewhere today, around 5% of them are in WeWork Labs. But when we first started, it was about half and half. And the thought was, bring great people into one room, let them do what they love, give them some support, give them some trust, uh, bring some really smart people who probably shouldn't be in that room in because they trust our opinion on these people's quality. And ultimately, um, labs became, I guess, kind of a big deal. And I think that what a lot of people don't know, and this is where I'll talk a bit about WeWork, is that this is our mission statement. I literally copy and pasted this from our website. Um, this statement, other than the part that says, like other than the past tense that says like we wanted to build more and in 2010, this statement hasn't actually changed from day one. And I think it's really important because what we talk about is building a community that's global, creating something where individuals um, are better as a group, something where, you know, being successful is not just about the dollars. Like we all just saw Dollar Shave Club, I think it was bought for, I don't know, $3 billion. It's a lot of dollars, like don't get me wrong. Um, but there are a lot of people out there that do great things that feel great about themselves, that feel successful. And this is really important for the way that we're changing how life and work works. That working with other great people 
and doing really cool things is actually the way that people want to work. And when we look at millennials um, in general, and I fall into that bucket, I'm 30, um, it's about 60% of millennials believe that travel being global is important in their choice of what they do. Um, that's a little different than our parents, I imagine. Uh, I'm generalizing here because I know some of you may be closer to my parents' age than mine, so I don't want to force that on anyone. But WeWork was, first and foremost, physical space. Um, if you've ever been to our building, this is our Bryant Park building. Um, that weird thing in the bottom right corner is actually one of our conference rooms. It's made out of these really cool like meat locker plastic things. And the idea was when we talk about design, which is you know half of this event, um, design matters to us. Design matters in how we work. It, we care about where we work. This office is actually a really cool office. There's exposed brick. Out of the 110 buildings that we have at WeWork, I'd say probably 50% of them have exposed brick. It's actually important. Like you want to feel good about the environment that you're in. So the first thing was workspace at WeWork. Um, the second thing was the community. And the community was those great people that I talked about. So in WeWork, we have members like this guy, Chris. Chris makes spaghetti sauce. Uh, he actually runs a thing called 747 Club. It's, uh, it's, it's this dinner concept and he goes around and he now helps corporations do this. Why do they do it? Because not only do millennials want to work in a really cool space, they actually want to hang out with the people they work with. So the way that we work today is, is to actually work in collaboration and enjoy the environment that we're in. And so Chris is really important to that. We have people like Brad from a startup called Skedaddle. You may not have heard of it yet. You probably will in the next couple of years. They're in WeWork in Boston. This is a tech startup. This is a company that has gone out to raise their seed round. They're providing transportation to hundreds of thousands of people uh, through these tour bus style concepts. Kind of cool. Like they may be the next Uber. In three years, I hope that Brad is standing here saying, I've built a $70 billion company or whatever Uber is. Um, this guy's thinking about how people want to travel, how they want to travel in groups. Uh, as I mentioned, we want to be around those people. So finally, on the topic of WeWork here, these are today's stats. As I mentioned, when I got started, we were about five people and we had one floor. Today, we're 110 buildings, 32 cities, 13 different countries. It says 60,000. I think it's closer to 70,000 members and over 10,000 companies. And the reason these numbers are important is not because WeWork has gotten bigger, which it has. The reason these numbers are important is that these 70,000 people are showing us the future of how people want to work. They want to work together. They want to care about what they do. They want to work environments that are fun, that uh, are not boring office buildings. Um, but they also want to work on things that they're passionate about. And I was really lucky to get to do that. And I've also been really lucky as I took the next step in my life, which was to move into investment. And I've invested in a few companies that fall along this topic, which is the one on the left here is a company called Indonero. They're based out here on the West Coast. Second one is FitMob, is acquired by ClassPass. The third one is called Leo Health, pretty cool company helping people with children. I myself uh, think about how they get medical care. The last one is Squire. The founders actually may be here. But the important thing about this is that, as Max said, we do things differently. We no longer want to hire as many employees. We want people to work kind of on demand. So Indonero does that around accounting. With FitMob, we definitely do not want to waste money on gyms. I, well, I definitely don't. But, uh, but we want to be able to access kind of unique classes. We want to go with groups of people. And that's what FitMob and ClassPass do. With Leo Health, as I mentioned, they help people deal with pediatrics, um, how children get coverage instead of having to go wait in these old dingy offices where my wife recently told me I would not be caught dead taking my child to the doctor with me. If I were sick, I would pay somebody to watch them because these offices are apparently really bad for kids. I don't know. Squire is interesting. It's a consumer product, which uh, they're actually in YC right now, but um, Squire is letting people discover and book and pay for haircuts. Guys, it sounds kind of silly, but honestly, so did Uber when I first heard of it, and, and these guys are doing pretty well. So, uh, so Squire is doing this around another thing that we do on a very regular basis, which is, you know, stay clean, shave and travel around the world. We need to get this done wherever we're traveling to. So I recently left WeWork. I joined a firm called Flybridge. We're based in New York and Boston. Uh, I have three other uh, partners, one other venture partner. And historically, we've invested in the enterprise. We've invested in deep technology. But more recently, this trend of how millennials are working, how design and life are changing, 
uh, have come into play. So some of you may have heard of a few of the companies that we've backed, but they range from education to robotics to finance. Um, I saw a shitload of Omni moving vehicles recently, which uh, was pretty cool while I was here in San Francisco. And this is all about how people are changing, how they work, how they live, how they play, how they learn. And ultimately, that's what I'm most passionate about. I'm passionate about how we no longer want to own properties, we no longer want to wait and hail a cab, but it's not about what we want to do, it's what we're able to do if we get rid of all that crap. Like if we don't own properties, if we don't have to hail a cab, if we don't need to you know, prepare our own food, it's not that we won't ever do it, but if we're able to optimize these things as millennials, we generally speaking will do really amazing things, we'll do greater things. That's what we're seeing in WeWork. That's what I hope to see through the companies that I continue to back and what I hope to see from people that are here tonight. So with that, that's kind of the story. Thank you.